As we read the gospel records, we read eyewitness accounts of the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. In a sense, the gospels are just the beginning of Christ's work. The adventure continues in the book of Acts. In this study with Scott Pauley, we consider the continuing work of Christ through the Holy Spirit, who works through the apostles and the New Testament church. Now, let's get in on the adventure. What does it mean to live a full life? Uh, does that mean length of days, that you live a long time? Does that mean that you have a lot of um, great experiences, you have good relationships? What qualifies a life as being a full life? Some time ago, a precious friend of mine was called home to be with the Lord at a stage in life that many would say is, is too early, a life cut off too soon. And yet, may I testify that that life may have been one of the fullest lives I have ever known because it was full of the Lord. The full life is a life that is full of God. Now, we've all been filled physically. We know what that's like. And occasionally you hear somebody say that uh, someone is full of it. Usually that means uh, a negative, not a positive. Uh, But we're talking here about a life that is full spiritually. And I would say this to you, uh, it is the wrong measurement to measure a life by its length. Uh, for example, think of the difference between Methuselah and Enoch. Methuselah lived 969 years, oldest man to ever live. Uh, but if you had to choose between Methuselah's life or Enoch's life, which would you choose? Friend, I would choose to be Enoch. I'd like to walk with God. I'd like to be the man that one day just was not for God took him. You see, a full life is not one that is long, but one that is strong. And an empty world needs people who are full of God. We return today to Acts chapter number 6 to see an illustration of this and uh, what an illustration it is found in the example of the first deacons. Let's read the opening verses again. The Bible says in verse 1, and in those days, you know, we read that so... uh, so lightly almost, but what days were these days? Days of opposition, days of persecution. In those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, Look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip and Prochorus and Decaner and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte, of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Did you hear it? In verse number three, these men were to be full, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. And in verse five, it specifically says of one of those men, Stephen, that he was a man full, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. So what does it mean to have a full life? May I define it from Scripture? First of all, it's a life full of faith. Uh, Full of faith. That's what the Bible says in verse number 5, a man full of faith. I wonder, are you a person full of faith? I met a man some time ago who said, oh, I'm a man of faith. And I asked him, faith in what? Faith in whom? Uh, It's not faith that makes the difference. It's the object of our faith. So I, I fear we have a lot of people today who have faith in faith, but they don't really have faith in God. Have you put your faith in the Lord? That begins, of course, by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But it doesn't stop there. No, no. Faith is uh, the, the way we're to live. The just shall live by his faith. In fact, if you come down to verse number 8, there's a repetition of this truth uh, concerning Stephen. It says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. In other words, 
faith is not just something you hold, it's something you use. It's like a muscle. It will atrophy if you don't use it. It must be exercised. And so faith is something that we're to, to use every day uh, in the way we live our lives. A full life is a life full of faith. Then a full life is a life full of the Holy Ghost. Notice the connection in verse 5. It says a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. There's a divine order here. You see that the life of the Spirit is the life of faith. Would you like to know how to access all of the resources of the Holy Spirit of God? Would you like to know how to see the power of God at work? By faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So God always connects the fullness of faith to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Are you really filled with the Holy Spirit today? Is your life overflowing? Is he in control? Now, that's a full life. Then it is a life full of wisdom. If you back up to verse number 3, the Bible says that these men were full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. And again, look at the divine order. Uh, first the spiritual, then the practical. See, the Holy Spirit does not produce a lot of nonsense and chaos. Our God is a God of perfect order when the Holy Spirit is in control, he gives you wisdom. And so he helps you know what to do, what to say, how to respond, where to go. He gives direction and guidance. That's why the Holy Spirit of truth came to us. A full life is a life full of faith. That's the entry point. Full of the Holy Ghost. And it produces then a fullness of wisdom. There is an understanding, a discernment that comes from God only. James talks about the wisdom that comes from above. I wonder, are you full of that wisdom today? And then when you return to verse number 8, the Bible says Stephen was full of faith and power. So a full life is a life full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, and full of power. We want to run to the last of these. We want to see God's power. Uh, but friends, power is, is the outworking of the fullness of God in you. Uh, faith, that's the foundation. The Holy Ghost, that's the consecration. Wisdom, that's the communication. Power, that's the demonstration. A full life is a life that is full of God, full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, and full of power. And there's a beautiful divine provision and a divine order in it all, heaven's fullness and heaven's flow. And it fills you and it flows through you. Listen, friends, if you want to die full, you got to live full. For example, just take this man, Stephen, that is twice mentioned in Acts chapter number 6 as being a man who is full of the Lord. If you turn one page and come to chapter 7, he died full of the Holy Spirit, full of strength. He ended full of joy, full of Jesus, full of forgiveness, full of peace. And that flood that poured out of his life set in motion something powerful for the cause of Christ and the advancement of the gospel. I want to say to you, dear ones, uh, that the life that ends in fullness must be lived in that fullness every day. Could I encourage you today to be a a full Christian, full of the Lord? Uh, Exercise faith. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Depend on divine wisdom Uh, Trust God for his enabling and power. This is the life of divine fullness. Father, may every one of us, uh, myself and every listener today, learn what it means to be full of God, empty of self, empty of this world's ambition, empty of sin, empty of everything that is less than your best, and a life full of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. The same is true today as it was then. The Lord is at work in this world through His Holy Spirit, drawing people to Himself. What a privilege as God's children to be a part of what God is doing in this world today. If you'll visit enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find many resources that will equip you as you walk with the Lord. You will find previous podcast series and episodes, full-length Bible messages, and a topical search engine that will aid you in studying Bible subjects. If this podcast is a blessing to you, we hope you will share it with a friend. Be sure to join us on the next episode of this continuing adventure through the book of Acts. Acts.